If this is going to be the next Supra engine, I'm fine with it. It's a 2018 BMW, something to do with the X Drive. And it's a hybrid and it's fuel efficient. And it's an M240i. Originally, I wasn't pleased with Toyota using a BMW i6 engine and calling it the new Supra engine. The hell is this about? Toyota can't build their own i6 again. The 1Js and 2Js were great. What? Toyota is going to use a Subaru running gear for the FRS? What? They can't build their own high-revving four-banger again? They did it three times in the past. 4AGE, 3S GTE, 2ZZ. But after driving a BMW M240i and feeling the... <gasps> B58, B30, M0. You know, I'm just going to call it the B58 for now. After feeling the 335 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque, turbo, inline six, you know, I'm fine. Nice and easy out, and then straight on the morning. <laughs> nice. Dude, that is nice and smooth and very smooth. Yeah. Wow. If this is what the new Mark V Super is going to be, I think I'm fine with it. Because the power band is so wide. The B58 builds torque at around 1,380 RPM and keeps it up until about 5,200 RPM. And that's just in time for the cams to roll over at 5,500 RPM and horsepower to peak at 6,500 RPM. All the while, the turbo is building boost. So how does torque build so soon uh, with the M240i and not fall off? I'm sorry, I was wrong. This is not a hybrid. Uh, I thought it was, it felt like it was, and there was one article that said it was. Uh, this is what's called efficiency dynamics. It mimics a hybrid, it wears the clothes of a hybrid, and it has that little battery there that makes you think it's a hybrid, and in eco pro mode, it mimics uh, the driving characteristics of a hybrid. There's the stop-start feature that comes on and off. There's the freewheeling uh uh, during coasting and you see the RPMs drop all the way down and the whole car gets quiet. You think it's a hybrid, but it isn't. Uh, I wasn't smart enough. I'm sorry. Uh, in lieu of trying to pretend I didn't say these things, I'm going to leave the video as it was. And uh, you can have a very nice chuckle at my uh, dearth of fact-checking. Anyway, I'll make it up to you next week. Enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks. Reese says he's averaging 27 miles per gallon. And the sad thing is, he gets 335 horsepower for his 27 miles per gallon, and I get 170 horsepower for 27 miles per gallon in my Subaru. 2018 BMW M240i X-Drive. Because it's 2019, and you're sick of your mother bugging you for grandkids. This is the best you're getting, Ma. Go pester your other kids. You know, like the one who married the banker who looks like if the Curb Your Enthusiasm theme had a face? Or how about the son who's dumber than a plate of warm biscuits? Oh, you want grandkids? No, you don't, Ma. You want living dress-up dolls. Oh, you want a divorce? No, you don't, Karen. You want a yoga instructor as a side piece. Oh, you want an E36? No, you don't, Kenny. You want an M240i. No, don't get the E36. You're gonna spend the same amount of money on that car as the cost to buy one of these things slightly used. Oh yeah, you're not gonna be hip. I get it. With the E36, everybody's gonna like you, but you're also gonna be the hippest car on the rollback. Yes, a hybrid. Uh, not that you'd know it for the sound, so you can live with your little secret. There are people out there who'd mistake the aftermarket exhaust for one of those douche-summoning loud valves. But this is far quieter, even if it can get downright belligerent if you stomp on the gas. But then this has a bit of random temperament. For instance, if you're going straight and let off the gas in an M240i, the car freewheels. That's like, a, like old 1950s tech. 
it's super weird. It feels like it went into neutral. And then it'll kick on the regenerative braking if you just touch the brakes for a slow, easy stop. Driving modes. First up, eco mode. It makes this BMW feel like a Mercedes C-Class. Watered down, plain oatmeal steering. Grandma's watching you today. So sit on her itchy couch for one lunar cycle because it's time for seeking solutions with Suzanne. Normal mode is E46 mode. Linear power, predictable turbo, and enough throttle response to let your dad know that you're successful now and you don't want the house when he dies, so stop asking. Sport mode, M mode, M performance mode. Here we go. I make more money than you. Look at all this 93 octane I don't need. Behold my dripping significance and the dark, shiny stain spreading outward, soaking through my vintage Levi's. I bought extra long ones so I can roll up the cuffs. I send dick pics to myself. And all the while, in no matter what mode you're in, the electric motor is doing its thing in the background. Picking up the slack, smoothing out your fiddling right foot, and hiding the torque converter stall. Back to eco mode for a second, because you're probably going to use this more than anything else. It's a lot similar to Tesla Model 3's chill out mode. Because even though BMW seems to want you to forget this is a hybrid, Various features exist solely to remind you what it truly is. You've got the M Performance exhaust, the carbon fiber accents, an adjustable lumbar support, the pre-collision warning and lane monitoring assist, as well as the occasionally unnecessary tech on top of that, which you're going to be dealing with whenever you're driving it normally. While there's no blind spot monitoring on this model, there are auto high beams. Because apparently BMW didn't learn enough for when Ford pulled this nonsense in the 80s on the Lincoln Town Cars. Granted, the auto high beams are only offered with the LED headlights, which this car has. But it wasn't a night shot, so we don't exactly have the chance to see how well or poorly the headlights operated. Other tech stuff. This thing will read speed off of speed signs and set a warning if you go over the speed limit. I suppose it's sort of like Waze or other GPS systems that coupled with some form of optical technology. Depending on how you feel about the necessity of optical tech, this is either a good thing or it's just something else to eventually malfunction. This is a BMW, after all. And this car makes it hard enough to fix some of its components as is. I mean, for crying out loud, good luck changing the rear spark plug. It's underneath the car. Uh, I mean... You can do it, but you're going to have to call in a favor from every mechanic you ever met. Oh, and the timing chain is back there too, so have fun with that. Yet with that said, some of the technology on the M240i is decent. Take the multi-display, largely because it doesn't interfere with muscle memory. Your hand automatically goes where a volume knob should be, and there's a volume knob there. HVAC controls, same place. You're not, oops, running into this big multi-display screen, and uh, now I gotta take my eyes off the road and hunt for the button I need. No, they're all there. And the multi-display is small enough as it is, so it's pretty much as superfluous as Krusty's third nipple. You don't have to retain your muscle memory to look at some funky new layout, like an elderly parent trying to figure out a TV remote with an input setting. They have no idea what HDMI is, they just want the button that takes them to Jim Gardner. It's not an M2, I know. Because as the straight pipes explained, even though there are M badges on these things, these are M performance badges. M performance is to M models what Mad Cat's controllers are to genuine PlayStation controllers. Or COS is to Sony. Or Pantech was to Blueberry. Or RC Cola is to Coke or rudders is to sheets, or Malto meal is to Count Chocula, or a Hummer is to a Blumpy. It's close enough to the genuine article, but it doesn't have that extra zing. And when you're seated in the BMW M240i, you get that feeling that this really is a coupe that can be whatever you need it to be. And the X-Drive is amazing in Pennsylvania. This is another alternative to an STI. The equivalent would be like a child with a freshly used cardboard box. There's a feeling of dominion when you're a child playing in a box. The sense that this is my kingdom 
and I rule over all I survey. A BMW doesn't make you feel like a king, but it does make you feel safe in a childish sort of way because its dimensions feel insular. It's for the child who occasionally hides for no reason, a kid who loves crawl spaces and the cool ground underneath his bed, because he has imagination, but not so much of it that he believes these other can. BMW, hear me revving, this is not Series 7. BMW, 